this screencast shows you how to use StormPath in a brand new Angular application. Angular CLI is a project that allows you to very quickly and easily install a brand new Angular application and have basic infrastructure that you'll need to run that application, build it, test it, all that kind of stuff. So you start by creating or installing uh, Angular CLI, then you do ng new, and then you can cd into it and serve it. So I've already created an application called Angular Storm Path Example. You can see all the files that are created here. You can see that I'm using the latest version of the Angular CLI at the time of this writing. And you'll notice that I'm using beta 31. If you don't have Angular CLI installed, you can do npm install, just like the instruction said. So this is the old version Angular CLI, the new way or the new beta 31 version uses angular slash CLI. You can also use yarn to do global add. Same thing. And since I like IntelliJ, I'll open it up in IntelliJ just to show you some basic functionality. The E2E directory contains the protractor tests the source directory contains index.html as well as the app itself with an app module, app component that basically just says it works, and then an HTML file for that component just says title. So if we run ng-serve in this directory, You can see the application running at localhost 4200. So to add StormPath, you can do yarn add angular StormPath. Then once you've done that in the app module directory, you can configure it to talk to our client API. So our client API, you'll have to create an account with StormPath. I already have one. I've logged in. And my default application has my client API details. So if you click on policies and go to client API, you can see the DNS label that's specified here. So I've set mine to just rabel.apps.spring.io. Copy that. And then if you look at the details, there's authorized origin URIs. We'll eventually have to set this to localhost 4200 for everything to work to allow the client that we're developing to talk to it. But we don't need to do that yet. So we'll need to export a function to tell StormPath configuration to talk to that endpoint. You can see here we've already pre-configured it here. You also need to import StormPath module. and add a provider of the StormPath configuration to point to that function. And the default is just to point to a local uh, endpoint. And so if you have proxying set up or you're, you have this packaged in a WAR file or an Express app, um, then everything will just work without this configuration. But since you're pointing to an external server, you do need this configuration. So we're going to provide storm path configuration. We're going to use factory pointing to that storm path config. And you need to wrap that with some curly braces. So that's all set up now. The second thing you'll need to do is actually show the login form from storm path. So in the SP component, we can show an SP auth port, which basically has login, forgot password, and registration all built into it. And once the user's logged in, we want to say welcome, and we want to give them the ability to log out. And so these variables here, user, as well as the logout method, aren't really anywhere, except you can see here that IntelliJ knows they're in the auth port component. So if we go to app component, one of the cool features of Angular 2.3 is you can just override components so if we extend from off port component, it has that logout 
function that we need as well as that user observable that we need to actually display this login form. So we can restart our application. Now if we go to demo, you'll notice that there's an error. It says cannot load HTTPS, basically cross origination request that says, hey, localhost 4200 doesn't work. So if we go back to that course configuration or origin URIs configuration, we need to add HTTP localhost 4200. Click off to save it. And then now if we refresh, it actually shows us the login form. We can click forgot password. We can click register and see all that information. But it doesn't look great. So we do expect you to use Bootstrap 3 by default. Um, you can override the templates and specify your own. But to make things look good, you can add Bootstrap here. Now if we go back, it actually looks like a nice form. You can log in using a pre-configured user I have. And it says, welcome, hip user. And of course, you can log out. So that's basically how you install StormPath in a brand new Angular CLI application and configure authentication. But there is one more thing. If we were to cancel this and run ng-test, you'll see that the test actually fails. The reason for this is that SP auth port is something new that it doesn't expect. It doesn't recognize what component that's in. So in our app component spec, we need to import it. Good old storm path module. And now we'll get a little bit further. But you'll see it's still making a request to slash me. And slash me is basically how we determine if you're logged in or not. So to override our HTTP service that we provide that does that automatically, you can use a mock component or a mock HTTP component that Angular provides with this testing. So you can do providers. import all the imports. So this is basically providing HTTP and using this factory that is a mock backend that comes from Angular. You can see there the path HTTP testing. And now there is no longer any request to slash me and our tests all pass. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to StormPath for Angular and give it a try.